This is my latest project, a collapsible and portable table saw stand for a job site saw. In order to transport it, I've installed two caster wheels and two scooter wheels. The latter two are a little too hard to be used in uneven terrain. In these cases, it's advisable to install two softer wheels or inflatable tires. This would help them cushion impacts. I've used some bolts as rotation axes for the legs. In order to fold the base, we only have to lift it a little on one end and kick the legs to fold them. I've installed bearer latches to lock the legs and stop them from unfolding on their own. Once folded, the rolling stand is only 48 centimeters high, which is why it can be stored under a work table. This is the 3D design included in the plans available on my website. As you can see, I'm going to make cabinets that will go on either side of the bench saw. The cabinets can be swapped and I'll probably make more of them so that I can swap them depending on the project I'm going to do. I think a sliding carriage could be a good option. Here are the threaded inserts that will allow me to fasten the cabinets to the stand. I've placed this piece of wood to show you how to transport the stand once it's folded. On one of the ends I've installed two handles so that I can move it more comfortably. When the cabinets are not installed, the handles turn by themselves when the stand is upright. Just like I did with the legs, I'm planning to build a system that will allow me to lock the handles when it's not in use. In its upright position, the stand can be stored by propping it against the wall. Just like before, it only takes up 48 centimeters from the wall, so it's perfect for small workshops where it can share space with a car, for example. Now I'll show you how to unfold the base. I lift it again on one end, and after pulling the barrel latches, I take out the stand legs with my foot. Then I repeat the same steps on the other end. It's important not to grab the base by one of the end parts, as it could catch one of my fingers. The base must always be lifted by one of the two longer rails. I should also clarify that I haven't installed any stops for the legs once unfolded, as I didn't think it was necessary. It's true that the floor in my workshop is very even, but this could be a problem on more uneven surfaces. In this design, it's easy to install a stop if necessary. This base without the saw weighs around 28 kilograms, and though it may not look it, it's very robust and stable. I used birch hard plywood, but it can also be made with lighter plywood like poplar or pine. This should lower the weight by around 10 kilograms. This design is perfect for use with almost any kind of bench saw up to 40 kilograms. The most important factor is to check if their fence has two profiles, like mine, and whether the fence can be moved above the cabinets. If that's not the case, I believe you could adapt this design to your saw with a few minor modifications. I think it could also be used with a miter saw if you make a base that acts as a spacer to lift it high enough. Now I'll show you how to make this foldable bench. I've had most of the required materials cut to size at the same place where I bought the board, in order to speed up the building process a little. 
I'll try to make the rest of the required cuts on the bench saw itself. I'll start by gluing together the parts required to make the frame rails. I'll use some stops to position the parts with glue and nails to stop the parts from moving when applying pressure with clamps. I'll try to place the nails in places where I won't have to drill holes or make cuts. I'll also use a previously flattened wood strip as a ruler while the glue is drying. This way I can ensure the rails are straight. Now I'll mark the required dados to join all the frame pieces together. I'll cut them with a table saw with a dado stack and a miter gauge. It's best to use a miter gauge that's a little more precise and robust than the default one that comes with a table saw. We could also make these dados with a normal cutting blade in several runs, or using a router with some guides. I'll also attach a piece of a board to the saw fence to use as a reference in order to make all the dados even. I pre-marked the remaining cuts and holes following the plans. First I drill the holes and then I cut all the rebates so that I can attach the legs and close the folding legs. I'll finish emptying out the holes for the legs with a dado stack. And to do this, first I'll make a cut with a knife to avoid tear out when the blade cuts into the wood. I'll do this process in two runs. Now I'll stick together the two small parts that will let me screw the caster wheels to the frame. I'll also glue together the four parts that will allow me to install the barrel latches to lock the legs. I'll move on to the upper parts of the rails. I pre-mark and drill all the required holes so that I can put the frame together and place the threaded inserts. I'll use the column drill itself to ensure the inserts are plumb. I'll also drill the holes to install the bench saw. I'll use glue and clamps, but you could also use screws to join these pieces to the rails. 
it's important to ensure they're square. I've sanded down all the parts and applied a couple of coats of water-based varnish on all of them. Now I can finish joining together the pieces that make up the frame of this folding base. I'll use a clamp to position the parts, and first I'll place the upper screws. I'll use the previously drilled holes as a guide to finish drilling the other parts. Here I must also ensure they're all square. It's time to make the base legs. Just like before, I'm going to glue all the required parts together. Once the glue is dry, I pre-mark the hole for the rotational axis and the curvature of the upper part of the legs. I drill the hole and mark the necessary rebates to install the pieces that will join the legs together. I'll cut these rebates just like before. Now I mark and cut at the required angle the lower part of the legs. I'll also use the table saw to pre-cut the curvature of the upper part. I'll finish the process with a sanding disc. On two of the legs I have to pre-mark and drill holes so that I can install the base handles. I'm going to cut the steel pipe pieces we need to make the rotation axis for the legs. It's important that the ends of the pipe are properly square. I'm going to put together the entire axis system so that I can get a better feel for its operation. First I insert the bolt into the hole, the washer and the steel pipe. Finally a locking nut will hold all the axis parts together. It's a very firm system, and I think it's perfect for this project. Now I can finish installing the legs on the base. First I insert the steel pipe into the legs. As you can see, the pipe fits the hole tightly, and this is exactly what we want to avoid them opening or closing on their own when using the base. I'm going to use some pieces of cardboard as spacers. After drilling the required holes, I screw the pieces that will join both legs together. I have to make an angle cut on the top part before putting it in its emplacement. 
This is the piece that acts as rotation stop and which will bear the weight of the saw and other bench cabinets. I've also added some rubber cabinet bumpers I had in my workshop to the legs. And now I can install the barrel latches. I'll use the barrel I'd previously drawn with a marker pen to pre-mark the hole in the legs. Now I'm going to cut and install the handles. I'll use the printable template to pre-mark the required holes and cuts. The rotation system is just like that of the legs. I have to insert a steel pipe in each handle. I'm also going to install the caster wheels. I'll use the bolts that came with the wheels. Now I can check if everything works as intended, and whether the base can hold all the weight without any problems. And it seems like that's the case. I can also place and fasten with screws the table saw to the base using the four holes I'd previously drilled. First I placed the bolts in the base, and now I found a little surprise. I had measured the holes in the back of the saw, and I made the plants and holes thinking the front ones would be equally spaced apart, but it turns out that's not the case. On the front, they're 10 millimeters further apart. To make do, I enlarge the holes in the front a little bit. Make sure you verify this on your saw before drilling holes in the base. Now all that's left is to install the bigger wheels on the front of the base. The plants include a printable template so that you can make them out of plywood, but in my case I decided to buy some scooter wheels. Here I'll also use a bowl that's long enough, washers and a self-locking nut. I'll try to place my logo in vinyl, in a slightly different way. I'll use a piece of acrylic and epoxy adhesive. I've prepared a template to make this process easier. I was fairly impressed with the result. Thanks to the epoxy, the logo looks very sharp and deep. The last step is to fasten it to the front of the frame with screws. That's all for today. In a few days I'll upload the second video where I'll be showing you how to build the router table.